and welcome to the BBC School Report at JCOS. I'm Jamie. And I'm Ollie. For the past two months, a group of 17 journalists have been working together to create news reports on subjects that interest them and news stories fresh today. From the teenage dream and modern music to budget GCSEs and more, we have a news report full of the things that interest us and the things that interest you. Now for the news of today. Chancellor George Osborne gave his budget speech yesterday and provided excellent news for schools like ours. He announced that JCOS and other schools around the country will, will remain unaffected by the budget and will be protected from any cuts that may otherwise have affected them. Osborne has pledged to protect schools and the NHS until 2015 when the next election will take place. An extra £15 billion pounds for new railroad, rail and construction projects by 2020, starting with £3 billion in 2015-16, will make it easier for children to get to school, and in particular secondary school children, as many take public transport on a daily basis. The nearest stations to JCOS are Cockfosters Tube Station and High Barnet Rail Station. With more money available to make improvements for these lines, we might even be able to get to school on time. In an article in the Evening Standard today, the Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls went one step further to say that if Labour were running the budget, he would bring forward long-term infrastructure investment in schools to develop them further rather than simply protecting them. Now we hand over to our reporters Lucas and Sack for our first reports on violence in video games. shooting wrecks a sleepy town in the USA. The actual crime is eclipsed by the fact that the culprit was an avid fan of video games and played violent games all the time. The world is divided as an argument rages. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? There have been so many reports on video game violence that it is hard to separate fact from fiction. Now, this report tries to settle that argument once and for all. Before anyone jumps to assumptions though, let's look at the stats. For every 10 minutes of playing video games, Boys between the ages of 8 and 18 will see between 2 and 124 acts of violence. And in 98% of games, the acts the player commits are unpunished. In more than half of video games, perpetrators of violence are rewarded. But what do adults think about this? We spoke to Mrs. Morsley, a parent and teacher at our school, Jacos, to find out. So, what are your opinions on violence in video games? Okay, I have very mixed opinions on violence in video games. I think, depending on the nature of the game, it, it can be okay, depending on the nature of the violence. Do you agree with children admiring people in video games? Not really, no. I think that, that, that video games are all totally fictional, and a lot of the graphics on video games are taken completely out of proportion. I don't think they're true to life and I don't think they're realistic. So to admire somebody that is a fictional character, I, if it was my children, I wouldn't be happy about doing it. I to the former editor of tech magazine Wired, David Baker, to get his opinion. When something terrible happens, we always want to look for a cause because that's reassuring. If we can work out why it's happened, our world feels safer. And video games are often the target of this. We've seen the stats, and we've seen two opinions. But what do the children think of these arguments? We spoke to Ryan, student at Jacobs. Do you think that video games are too violent? I think that some are too lifelike in the way they represent the game which can influence some people. However, I think that okay if you are sure yourself that you know it's definitely not real. Do you think video games affect violence? From parents to students to fellow journal journalists, we have seen many viewpoints, but unfortunately, no matter how sure we may be, there will always be different opinions. And at the end of the day, it's up to you. Zach and Lucas, BBC School Report. Thank you, Lucas and Zach. Our second report is about the teenage dream and the truth behind it. We can now go to a story I investigated earlier with reporters Ella's, Ella and Michelle. The teenage dream. Makeup, models and magazines. 90%, yes, 9 out of 10 girls say they are unhappy with their weight and two out of three girls under the age of 13 
say they have gone on a diet. Not only are these statistics sickening, but they are also incredibly dangerous. So how has this happened? The answer can be found in three words. Makeup, models and magazines. The original use of makeup was for adults to hide their age, make themselves look younger and to dress up for parties or going out. Now, the use of makeup has spiralled out of control as a survey shows that young teenagers use 17 beauty products a day, such as nail polish, blusher, lipstick and mascara, whereas adults only use 13. So how has a market that wasn't even meant for teenage girls spiralled so out of control? We're going to start with foundation. It's to make her look fake, in short. Magazines are everywhere, in shops, at home and even in the hospital waiting room. They're just so easy to pick up. But are they really what they seem? Their content, fashion, celebrities, adverts and perfect models. The main reason for some girls barely eating. We wanted to hear from the magazines themselves. We contacted lead British teenage magazine Bliss to hear what they had to say. At Bliss, our goal is to empower teen girls to feel happy about their healthy bodies. We never Photoshop our images to change body shapes. Yes, we do digitally alter pictures, but more often than not, it's to change a background colour or to remove a stray hair falling from someone's face. These two pages show how to apply your makeup so you look like that. But it is impossible to look like this. Their skin cannot be so perfect, even with layers of makeup applied. So what did teenage author, journalist and agony art Hilary Freeman have to say? I think airbrushing is a very bad thing and shouldn't be used at all in teenage magazines, which are read by people who are often insecure and impressionable. It gives young people a completely unrealistic view of what people look like. Nobody can ever live up to the perfect airbrushed image. We heard from Chris Edwards, who works for Northern and Shell, about his side of the argument. We do airbrush our images and we do so to make individuals more attractive. Our business couldn't function without doing it. This is simply because people buy our products as they want to see celebrities looking good on the covers of our magazines. We are a business and are here to make money, and I highly doubt airbrushing will ever fully disappear from the industry. So there you have it, the teenage dream that doesn't even exist, even on the models teenagers base perfect on, the fake models. So really, no, the teenage dream of perfect doesn't exist. And our message to you, as teenagers, is to go for the other dreams. The dreams of a happy and bright future. The real dreams, not the fake teenage dreams. Thank you. Great work there, Ollie. Following on from that, our next report focuses on sexual imagery in the media. Here is a story I recorded earlier with reporters Ella and Lucinda. Are we being exploited too much? Has there been an increase over recent years, and what's next? Hi, I'm joined by a group of Year 9 students. Which of these recording artists would you rather dress like, Rihanna or Emily Sandé? Well, um, I'd rather dress like Emily Sandé, because in this particular photo, she looks a lot more respectable um, than Rihanna does, because she's wearing more clothes and she looks a lot more modest. So, um, yeah, I'd rather be like her. Yeah, I agree. I think... Um also, Emily Sandy has a better reputation than Rihanna. I'd also prefer to be Emily Sandy because she's a lot more respectable. And Rihanna's been involved in like lots of scandals, drugs, stuff like that. And she's just not in this photo. She's, she's half naked. So how far can we push the boundaries? And how much say do recording artists actually get? Well, the ITC guidelines on music videos and programme content states that promos which contain explicit graphic or excessive depictions of sexual intercourse or which depict members of either sex being used as mere objects for sexual gratification or which might reasonably be considered as pornographic are not acceptable for broadcast. Excessive sexual lyrics or representations of sexual intercourse or deviance should not air before the 9pm watershed. Speaking to a music producer, Dan Hart, he says that the music videos have to have one of three things in order to make them successful. They have to either be sexy, funny, or involve money. He then led on to say how music videos are very gratuitous. Now it's up to you to decide. Thank you. Now, in honour of Twitter's seventh birthday, a report on Twitter and other social media and about the restrictions behind them. 
We can now go to our reporter, Kezia. We're not allowed to post everything that we want to on our Twitter and Facebook accounts. Is this fair? On Monday, people part of BBC Scoreboard visited the BBC Broadcasting House. They were forbidden from posting pictures of their trip on Facebook or Twitter until 1pm. Sometimes, the limits to what you can post are understandable, but have they gone too far? Recently, the Evening Standard has put details of the budget on Twitter before George Osborne had delivered a statement. The journalist who tweeted it has been suspended over the leak, which happened 20 minutes before George Osborne started his statement. A rise in tax allowance to £10,000 was one of the things on the front page of the Evening Standard leaked about the budget. The Evening Standard apologised for what they said was a very serious mistake and have published a heartfelt apology. But why is it such a serious mistake? If we find something, why not share it online? Isn't that what social media is all about? The tweet didn't have anything to do with the Evening Standard and didn't promote it in any way. However, in 1947, Hugh Dalton was forced to resign after a leak in the paper about the budget. This is Ayala Godley Alter and Kezia Labato reporting for BBC School Report on Thursday the 21st of March 2013. Back to the studio. Thank you. Now we find out the truth. Are mobile phones helpful or harmful? We go to our reporters Zara, Lucy and Amy. How much do you rely on your mobile? A recent study has shown that the average student aged 8 to 18 altogether spends an hour and a half texting each day. This is as well as the seven and a half hours an average student spends looking at a screen in their daily routine. Here is an interview with Mr Quinn, our deputy head teacher here at JCOS. OMG, what a question. No, I don't think they're affecting how people speak. Um, certainly in my experience, apart from the odd phrase that you, know, you hear people saying like OMG, and maybe they'll say LOL now and again, I don't get the sense that with spoken and a little bit more with written language and where our text speak is coming into formal written language and that, that's a little bit of an issue. Well connected to that, do you think mobile phones are essential in an emergency? They're very handy to have if you need an emergency, but there, there are still, you know, public telephone boxes available and there's still other people, other members of the public around that you could call, but certainly they are useful to have in an emergency. Um, I wouldn't say they're always essential all the time. Now over to a student for her opinion. Well, I think that it could be an aspect and that certainly bullying and things do occur because of phones, but I don't think it's the phones that cause them, I think it's the people. Thank you. Now for another truth. Is modern music real? We go to our reporters Rebecca, Samuel, Adam and Sophie. Have you ever listened to music and wondered what the robotic voice changing machine is that some singers use? It's called auto-tune. This is the process of enhancing the pitch and the tone of a singer's voice. Why is music becoming fake? What happened to the natural talent that singers had, like Whitney Houston or even current singers like Adele? Here's a recent interview we did, we did with our teacher, Miss Gusted. We're interested in your view about modern music. How do you think that music has evolved over the last 20 years? Um, I think music is a lot like fashion. Um, it never really changes. I think it works in cycles. Um, and you think about the great singers like Whitney Houston who were singing these real power ballads in the 1980s and now we see the likes of Adele, uh, more modern um, and contemporary but also singing songs that evoke emotion um, that are quite powerful and I think that's the same for, for any genre of music. What about auto -tune? Do you think this form of editing music actually improves the song? Um, I don't think it does improve the song. I think it adds a different kind of effect but 
for me as a listener to music, I like music that um, moves me, that makes me feel an emotion and I don't think that quality um, really does evoke any sort of emotion so no I wouldn't say it improves the quality. Tuning a singer's voice has become more common over the last 10 years. The most recent scandal concerning it occurred in 2010 when the X Factor admitted using auto-tuning techniques to sharpen the voice of 18-year-old Gamu. Some people from the older generations may also be disappointed by, with the way music has evolved over time. Music used to be all, all about the voice and talents, but things have changed. Our head teacher, Mr Moriarty, gives his views. What genre of music do you like and why? So I've got what we call Catholic taste, which means I like a little bit of all sorts. I like jazz, I like the music of Bach particularly, I like the music of Gershwin, and I like the kind of music that mixes together two different genres and ends up with something new and different. Do you like any songs with auto-tuning and why? I would always rather go for something that was absolutely natural, because that's where the real talent shows through. That's what shows the difference between the true artist and, and the, the artist who's had a bit of assistance. And how do you feel about music today? So I've got to be honest and say I'm not a, I'm not a passionate follower of modern music, but at its best it is fantastically edgy and exciting and creative and gets the heart racing and gets the emotions running. At its worst I think it can be shallow and cheap and repetitive and, and a bit kind of plastic for want of a better word. The best of it is wonderful, the worst of it, as has probably always been the case for music down the ages, not so inspiring. Thank you. For our final story of the day, some entertainment news. Girls Aloud have split up again. It was announced last night that Girls Aloud have split up after reuniting in the last few months for their 12-day UK tour. The tour celebrated 10 years together. together even though for the past three years the five piece have concentrated on solo projects. The band official sent a tweet shortly after they left the stage at their final performance in Liverpool last night. The tweet read, We have now come to the end of our incredible time together. That's all from here at JCOS for our BBC School Report. Thank you for joining us and have a good day. Goodbye. Hello, it's been a frosty start to the day, so many of you may have had to scrape some ice off your windscreens. But the good news is, is that it should be a dry day for most of us. However, in the next few days there are some severe weather warnings. There will be some heavy snow in the Midlands and heavy snow in North, Northern Wales as we move into the end of the week. At low level, this snow will reach around 10 centimetres, but in the hills, in the central areas of the Midlands, like Birmingham, the snow could reach 30 to 40 centimetres. There will also be a bitterly cold wind that will bring some rain to Devon and Cornwall. And I'm afraid to say this patchy rain near Plymouth may save for up to two days. So if you are anywhere near Devon or Cornwall today, don't forget your umbrella. Have a good day. Goodbye.